Hello everyone! <laughs> really? But today we've got a very interesting deal and that's what I want to show you here. We'll focus not really on the solution so much, but we'll focus on the issue that I had with the solution. Hello everyone, day 14. You know the drill. <laughs> Pretty much we're talking about the cave and the sand falls down and you either want to get out or just be buried by the sand. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> we have this kind of input which actually describes the rock formation. This is the visualization of the map. So this is where sand starts to fall down and whenever it encounters either a rock or another sand that is already settled, uh, it will try to go diagonally left and then it will try to go diagonally right. That's it. That's the whole thing. Let's take a look. Before we can cover that, we, we need to at least describe a little bit of a domain so you know what the hell is going on. And here is our domain. All right, so we've got, as usual, we've got a point, We've got a line that contains two points. We also have the starting sand position, or rather the sand starting position, so wherever the sand will come from. The sand state, so the sand is either falling or it actually already settled. And our sand unit not only has the state, but also the current position. We're reading the input. What we get in the map is actually all the points that are rocks. We've got the while, it's going to repeat while the state is settled. So after each run, actually the send unit will go down as far as it can. When it's settled, we're good. We can go with another send unit. But when we finish up with the send unit that is still falling into the abyss, then we end the while loop. In terms of get next state, the important part in here is that get sand unit next state it will go pixel by pixel by pixel by pixel so we have always three options we either can go one step below one step below to the left or one step below to the right and then we need to test whether that position in the map is already taken all right this already covers the whole part one and we can check that by running day 14 and, running. and it's running and you probably can see already the issue here right it's kind of a long time for such a small and simple algorithm uh, let's give it one more moment oh my goodness yeah that really takes a while but it's actually the correct output it's just damn slow. Part number two. Part number two changes one thing. It adds a floor to the whole map. So whatever is the maximum Y um, in the current map, we go two steps below and then we add a floor which pretty much goes indefinitely to the left and indefinitely to the right. What this causes is really that the sand will always settle somewhere. So you can probably guess that it's much more sand than before. And this is, this is kinda, <laughs> kinda interesting. For the naive solution, we've got very few differences. So first of all, we add a new test. <laughs> same old, same old. <laughs> then we add the floor, we actually create floor points and then we add them to the map. So the only logical change in here is actually the while condition. We continue as long as we don't hit the sand starting unit with the sand state settled. Then we are done. And the funny part is it actually does work. It does. It just takes so freaking long. <laughs> I'll try to gather how long it actually takes to run this algorithm in this form. I understood that this is not optimal to say the least. So we could improve that. Nothing changed logically 
apart from the fact that we can stop earlier. So that was first part of my optimization without a plan. The second part was that we would jump however much we can right away. We were going pixel by pixel going down. It's just shortening those instances where the sand is falling until it hits something. Uh, it just jumps. I mentioned a few times already optimization without a plan. That's a bad idea. Like if you don't measure, the optimization you do will be laughable at most and probably not very helpful. How to actually measure things? And this is where Rider is very helpful. And we can profile this program mainly in two angles. So the first angle is actually memory. And memory is not always super important, but sometimes it can tell you a lot. How do we actually measure uh, memory used by our program? Well, we run the program, then we go into dot memory profiler, and then we can attach to day 14. We can also take a look at a specific point in time. It already gives us something to think about. The rest of it in, is in kilobytes, so it's not so, so bad, right? But that list of uh, points is really something that hits us hard in the memory. The main thing that we are using a list for is actually the map. Into the map, we add not only the rocks, but also the sand, right? So it does get quite big. So this was the first hint. And then we can profile the CPU during our program. If you are using the new, new UI for Rider and looking for profiling, go here, go into run, and then here you can see profile day 14 with sampling. We also know that the solution for part two is really freaking long. So we'll profile only solution for, or rather part one of day 14. Do bear in mind, this is dot trace profiler, not dot memory. Those are two different things. Dot trace is something that looks into the CPU. So let's take a look and see how that works. What we can take a look at is flame graph. Could uh, take a look at only main thread. What is taking the most time in this? Obviously it's get number of sense units that settle, makes sense, and obviously get sand unit next state. I mean, the whole logic is pretty much enclosed in that function, so once again, makes sense. Then we've got is position left taken, which is a huge chunk of our CPU time. Let's turn off the hotspots for a moment. You can always go down in this view. So let's take a look at is position left taken. Solution point equals is something that is very pronounced in here, right? It's, there's a lot of that. So we go into our famous get sand unit next state. And then we have is position below taken, is pos position left taken, which is exactly what we are looking at. If you have any experience with optimization, you are probably screaming at the screen because it's quite obvious what's wrong in here. Since we are using a list and the map is actually quite a big list, whenever we go list contains, we go one by one, each element by each element. Yes, it's an optimized thing, but it's still going one by one, one by one. It will always be slow. So we need to transform our map. What we could use instead is actually the 2D array. We don't have to do all of those equality comparisons. So we don't have to keep points in the array. We can actually hold only Boolean in the array because the space is either taken or not. So our map was transformed to Boolean 2D array. And that's the whole idea here. It changes the look of the code a little bit, but as you can see, the next position below left and right is exactly the same as it was before. The main change is in here. Is position below taken, left taken, right taken. Now is just referencing or rather getting the value out of the map. 
so we don't have to go through the whole map. We know exactly the, the value we are targeting and we are just checking whether that place is occupied or not. That's it. And obviously after, um, after the sand unit is settled, we modify the map to hold a true value in there. So when we go into profiling here, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I love this. It was 14 seconds, now it was 120 milliseconds. <laughs> Just to have a bit of fun here. So now we have part one and part two. If we profile that, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's done. That is actually 543 milliseconds, not even a second, a half a second, <laughs> really. So yeah, that's a difference a proper use of collection can make. Thank you very much, guys. I'm very happy you've been here. Uh, I hope you had some fun. And as always, we can do better as a pack. Bye. So we do have the starting position. Oh, I actually didn't use the starting position type. Yeah, I did not. It's just a point. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so we're starting with, um, with really the line itself. Although, once again, I'm not using the type. Like, what's going on with me today? <laughs> All right. So we could probably just remove that and that, and this would still compile, right? Um, let's check it out because I'm, now I'm curious. Uh, where are the unit tests? Here we go. So those are the day 14 tests. Yeah, let's run them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, those were two completely uh, unused types. Good job, Martin. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at how is our profiler doing all right <laughs> so it's already 10 minutes and it's still not calculated yeah and i'm not sure if i have enough patience <laughs> yeah i don't think i do